Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and Zillow, okay, like I projected in my last Zillow video, flip flops on the interest rates yet again. And the only trend that Zillow is setting right now is that they are constantly having to flip flop. And they're flip flopping so much that they have basically, other than their guesstimate, they have basically stopped forecasting which is really refreshing so they can better focus i hope on the data so that they better understand the direction of the housing market which is really easy to understand especially if you have no financial interest on it doing well right and that's what i believe that we're seeing a lot here you guys is we're seeing a lot of people give the wrong logic the wrong advice and i believe the reason that is is the biasness to continue to profit off of leads that they get from generating videos or articles or whatever it is they're doing, which is exactly why I'm not generating leads. And I appreciate all of your guys' emails. And I've, uh, you know, I've made this very clear. I'm not currently, and I will tell you when, I will tell you when I have a team, I will tell you when I get back into origination, but I am not currently originating. And I refuse to give all of the people that reach out to me for help, right? Will you represent me, Travis? Will you help me? I'm so flattered by that. I love you guys for sending me that. But right now I've stepped out, right? And I refuse to give that information and to throw it to the wolves, which means to sell leads. And you guys, most all real estate YouTube channels, that's exactly what they do. Either way, you guys, we're going to jump into an article from Zillow titled mortgage rates increase as markets respond to conflicting economic data and consumers are responding to conflicting economic reports or just professional guesstimates on the housing market. Regardless, you guys remember this. I'm not a financial advisor. Even if I want to be yours, my bio is as realtor, loan officer, and instructor in Texas. So I have an intimate understanding of all things real estate. And if you guys could understand, this is my personal YouTube channel. I try to kick you guys a video or two a day. So please like this video, subscribe if you haven't, shoot me a comment below. Your comments keep me going. I absolutely love you guys. Let's get started on this brief article right now. And this is all it is right here. It's a very short read. Mortgage rates increased last week, revising direction after several weeks of decline. Do you see Zillow is flip-flopping every single week? Every single week, this is crazy. And I warned you guys last week, I'm like, their next article is gonna say rates are going up. Let's see what they have to say. Comments from Federal Reserve members earlier in the week started moving interest or moving interest rates higher as they message that there is still much work to be done in taming inflation. Jobs data late in the week was much stronger than the market expectations, a signal that the Federal Reserve will likely need to continue aggressive actions to slow economic growth and rein in inflation. Inflationary, inflationary pressures. Rates are still volatile as investors react to conflicting data on an, an, on an economic activity and labor markets that may drive future Fed actions. Markets are trying to estimate the magnitude of the next Fed rate hike in September, 50 or 75 basis points, and how much higher they may go in the future. After the strong jobs report last week, investors will be focused on inflation data this week, CPI and PPI, and any implications for the future Federal Reserve rate actions. So after that report, actually, I believe that they made the report and then later CPI came out. I'm not 100% sure, but CPI came out afterwards and it was actually a lot under the estimates and most of the estimates, I believe were about 8.8 .8 for CPI. The CPI actually came in 8.5, which was way lower than expectations. But here's the thing, it's still super high. So that happened, the market initially freaked out. The stock market started rallying like crazy. Everyone's like, oh, the Fed's ready to pivot. But here's the thing, the actual mortgage interest rates, and I'm gonna make a video today about this, they're, they didn't go down. And if they did go down, they only went down a fraction. And the way I am determining that, y'all, and I'm about to pull up this right now, is by watching the 10-year treasury bonds. And right now, the 10-year treasury bonds are, up, even though initially when CPI came out, 10-year dropped like crazy. I'm like, oh my gosh, interest rates are going to go back down. But almost immediately after, they soared back up to near 2.8%. Take a look at this. This is 
All right, so this is what I watch right here to basically get a better understanding for the direction of the mortgage rates, even though I can access daily pricing from the employer that I work for. But here's what I'm watching right here, ten, the 10 year right here. And you can also see that everything is now inverted over this 10 year, meaning all of this is higher. This is actually not inverted in this uh, screenshot, but it was inverted yesterday. This is as of 811 at 955 AM. And this is what I'm watching. Now, before the CPI numbers came out, this was sitting at about 2.8. So you can see it only went down a fraction from where it was when the CPI number came out, which was 2.8. So whether or not this get, goes up this week is going to essentially, and next week is going to essentially tell us what direction the mortgage rates are going and what direction they're headed. But I suspect the next update on average interest rates, which comes out next Thursday is going to be a slight, like a fraction of a decrease. So essentially what I'm saying is, is rates are going to stay about the same. They may go up again in September when the Federal Reserve doubles its asset selling programs to, I believe it's 95 billion. Okay. I'll have to double check the exact number, but it is an astronomic amount. So in conclusion of this video, and I want to be very clear about this. Okay. My plan is to start the process of purchasing immediately after midterm elections. That's what I'm banking on. After midterm elections, I expect a whole bunch of crap to fall apart even more than it already is. So I'm going to start, I'm not going to buy unless I find a really, really good deal. Again, I'm just guesstimating here. If I find something tomorrow, that is a deal I can't refuse. I'll buy it. Okay. But I'm essentially telling you my goals. I'm going to start the process after midterms in November. And when I say start the process, that means pre-qualification, getting all my paperwork together, right? Sending it into a lender, seeing what my payments are, making sure that underwriting is written on my loan, things of that nature. And then I'm going to start looking at houses, monitoring the market, and I'm going to strategically make offers on specific homes that fit my individual needs. And I'm going to take you guys along that journey with me. The reason why I'm not really emphasizing in that valuable information right now is I am so concerned about making sure people right now are hearing what I'm saying, which is tread lightly, be very cautious when purchasing the biggest financial transaction of your life. Don't be overly optimistic. We're talking about hundreds, if not millions of dollars. Okay. So treat it like that. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Treat it like that. All right. Other than that, you guys, I really appreciate you watching this video with me. I hope you got some value from it. I hope you guys got a little bit of a better understanding on how you can watch the direction of mortgage interest rates. And if you're out there investing in real estate, I do wish you luck and I hope you win.